Hey guys, so uh, recently I have been through some uh, some decay, I've been through some other stuff, ended up around Diamond 4, took a weekend, got myself back up to Masters, surprisingly co close to GM, and now let's take a peek at uh, some of the heroes that I used to get back up to Masters. Alex Straza was one of them, and I actually really like Alex Straza on this map. I feel like every time people think Alex Straza, they're like, oh, Infernal Shrines or Volskaya. And I feel like this is a very underrated map for Alex Straza. It's one of those maps that your dragon can often win you one of the tributes, and it's available every other tribute. So if you're winning 50% of the tributes, then you're going to win, at the bare minimum, half of the curses. And if you can plan it out right, or win even one, without using your Dragon Queen, then you'll be in a really, really good position. Because then you can win one, have your Dragon available to win the next one, and you'll end up getting the curse before the enemies do. So the biggest thing to note about Alex Straza is that her healing is rather weak until about level 7. And even then, her healing just isn't that great in team fights without using either her dragon or her ultimate ability but when she has her dragon and or ultimate ability available she actually is one of the best healers in the game as far as just pure healing numbers in fact i have a quite a few games that have ended actual ranked games over 200,000 healing done purely because of the amount of possible healing that you can have in some of her builds her q build for example you can keep people topped up against any amount of poke and her w build can heal a ridiculous amount if you have a lot of bruisers so i tend to go the w build when i have two frontliners and in this case we have two to three because gray main could be diving in as well so i did use the uh uh, I do end up going W build here. The goal for W build is to try to get your globes done as fast as possible without really doing anything too crazy about it. So honestly, I'm pretty much just hanging out, not too worried about if I complete this, but I would be happy if I could complete it earlier than later. We do have a fight over a, a camp right here, and I don't usually like using dragon on... on um, outside of objectives, but important camps, I do sometimes use dragons so we could win that important camp. Uh, you can see the amount of healing that we have available right here. We were able to keep this ETC fully healed up and also heal back up the gray main. And we don't really use too much here, and we end up getting a kill and the camp that they tried to invade us on, and they lost a lot of soak from that. So I'm not a huge fan of using it there because we won't have it for the objective, but now we do have a camp that they don't have. Uh, right about when the objective is about to spawn. We don't really have time to grab that, but it looks like someone else already got it ahead of time. And now we just need to go through and get ourselves back up to uh, above 75%-ish. I mean, this build doesn't require you to be above 75% because you're just dropping down Ws. At level 4, uh, this build is, is just a straight W build. So you're just going to be getting all the W talents. The goal of this build is if you have heavy frontline, you're going to drop down a bunch of Ws, and which is your, uh, your abundance. You're going to drop an abundance of abundances down on the ground and just let the abundance of those abundances keep your team alive and give a ton of value to your team which is why i like surge of vitality 30 percent movement speed allows anyone that was in there to get out if they need to get out or anyone that's in there to go back in if they want to go back in so right here for example 30 percent movement speed he charges right in gets polymorph but he's still healthy and i'm just throwing ease from max range remember my healing kind of sucks uh we're pre-level seven and i also have already used my dragon but the great part about this is we did win one without needing the dragon which means we're gonna have the dragon for the next one and we might have level 10s for the third one which could give us a curse for free and the enemies won't have that ability so it's the cool part about uh utilizing alex straws on this map is if you know when to use your dragons you can pretty much win objectives so let's fast forward a little bit as we get to the, the later ones. This game actually goes on for longer than uh, I'd recommend. This W that I'm going to show you is one that I recommend people get really good at, which is just a quick W behind the, the fort. And it's because people usually don't expect it, like they can't see where it is, so you safely heal your team. There's way too often that people say, oh, well, Alex Straza gets hard countered by Kael'thas and gets hard countered by Ana. It's like, but 90% of your heals are going to be like this. You just quickly heal everyone up, 
and get them all topped off when the enemies don't even know when you threw your heal out. And otherwise, you're just doing an overwhelming amount of healing. Like, Kill Thos isn't really that scary when you're throwing down two abundances and then also a, uh, a cleansing flame. You can outheal all the damage that Kale Thos does, and your team doesn't even need to worry about it. And that's why I'm not usually too worried about a lot of the people that people say counters Alex Straza. I would say Ale or Ana counters her, but Ana counters a lot of healers more so than Alex Straza. Single target healers are kind of the best example of that because a lot of times Anas that are playing correctly are going to fire off their W on a single target that their team is focusing on. Uh, I believe we try to go around the safe way and we actually split up quite a bit here. And I think we get one more interrupt. Yeah. I go dragon. I toss out a W. Go dragon. Toss out another W. And a couple heals at the same time. We now heal through all of this. Get extra 30% movement speed. And we can play a little bit more aggressive now if we want to. Applying a lot of damage. We split up their team. We healed. So as janky as this fight actually was, uh, that dragon makes it super easy to win objectives. So they tried to dive into the back line to pretty much just immediately get on me. And it did nothing because I just out healed it. I used dragon. My dragon's form of abundance heals for 30% of maximum health. And it's just the, the Murden who thought he had me it was just couldn't do anything so that's kind of the greatest part about abundance is it's just so strong in normal form and dragon form and then dragon just allows you to just push everyone away when you guys need to get back or just deal a bunch of damage and heal up your team now this next objective we won't be able to use dragon for so this is why i may be trying to get level uh 10 as fast as possible and i do also want to point out look at the level right or look at we're at six minutes and 19 seconds in this game and i'm at 17 globes already this is why it's super important to kind of predict where the globes are going to be make sure that you're getting double soak where you can make sure that you can deny a globe from the enemy if you can whenever they drop something like this be ready to pick up their globes as six minutes into the game i'm at 17 you should be looking at similar numbers. I mean, this is probably not as high because we won two objectives, so we got two free globes from that. Um, but you should be able to get something like that if you can double soak lanes. Uh, another situation is like I could let this die if this Brightwing continues to kill things, and I could save that globe. Um, but honestly, we just want to get to 10s and get to the objective. If you're 10s and you're going to the objective, you don't really need your dragon because your ult is just as powerful. You can heal someone for 444. In fact, you can heal your entire front line for 444 five times in a fight. I recommend never using this to deal damage. I focus 100% on healing outside of like maybe if someone's sitting at like 10 health or something and I can just like hit him once and just take him out but otherwise i focus primarily on healing my team and it's a really really good ult for that they are trying to get their level 10s as well and this is where this fight might go a little sour is that we don't get this before they hit 10s and he's going to interrupt once here i'll toss down a w so we can both sit in it i'll channel as well in case there's a single interruption and we get the curse they hit level 10s and we're pretty close to getting our upgrade. So if you're ever curious at what the upgrade does, after collecting 15, it increases the healing by 5%. And after 25, it gives everyone a globe, which means that your W now heals from a range, as well as you're going to heal 9% of someone's health. Now, the cool part about giving globes is that, remember what I explained about playing Alex Straza. Your combo should be a W, a Dragon Form, a W, an R, a W, Dragon Form ends, and an another W. And if you get all of that, that's four W's in a single fight, meaning also four globes in a single fight. And it's a really, really cool tool. And if you see my mana is 100%, while sieging, I'm always making sure that my my E is going to be hitting an extra target. And as long as it hits that extra target, that means if my first target dies, the extra target is on fire for me to get value out of that. Uh, but our the curse is over, and we didn't really need to use anything major. We got uh, two forts down and pretty close to another one. We could actually throw here if they show up. But I do have dragon, so I do use dragon, and then I also use ult. With the dragon and the ult, we are able to keep my team alive and win the dragon, or win the uh, the boss, I mean. 
So, again, I mean, look at all the healing that I was able to apply in that one fight. We had uh, W, Dragon, W, and then we had Ult, W, and now the, the W's back off cooldown again. It's an incredible amount of healing that you can do right away, and it's something that people just don't really see um, that you can actually do. Like, it's, it's just absolutely insane. But, uh, yeah, so be ready to do healing like that. Whenever you're playing Alexstrasza. I like Pacify whenever the enemies have a Diver. Or whenever they have someone that's just going to be doing a lot of damage that we need to worry about. Particularly if he's about to use Consume Souls and I reduce his damage by 50%. Then boom, we don't need to worry about that anymore. Uh, or if the Rainer's just getting a little carried away and he gets right into our team. Then again, Pacify. I also love Pacify because it's just a really easy slow to land. And it's cooldown comes off very easily if the enemies have a lot of CC. This right here could also be a pretty bad throw if we go for this and that's my only concern about that is we don't really want to split fight like this we want to be with our team the other part about level 7 is with all that increased healing that your W does uh, your W can also heal you for 30% more uh, as well as you get an extra healing off of regen gloves, which you're going to be dropping regen gloves, making it to where people are going to have a really hard time killing me as this game goes on this is very risky. I don't have Dragon. I do have my ult, but I need to be a little cautious about how this plays out. I'm going to throw a W down for this this uh, uh, ETC, and then we're going to just walk in, see what we can do, and then probably have to walk away. I do have to use my ult here to keep everyone up, but this is a pretty rough dive. Not a huge fan of it, and so I just drop away pretty far away from my team. And we walk away from this one. The tribute is spawning. I will have Dragon back up for this tribute, but I won't have my trait. Uh, and we won't have the... The... Uh, Dahaka either. I do use a Pacify, but I should have saved it for... Uh, I could get one more heal off on him, but he wasn't in range. And this is just a little bit of throwing. And I, again, Masters Games, every, each team gets three throws. So I have a feeling this game is going to be all about the throws. Game of Throws today. But overall, I mean, if we were to take a peek at the healing, um, you can see the numbers are pretty good, and they're only going to get better the longer this game goes on. It's, it's just incredible. And to be honest, we're kind of stomping in a lot of these fights. So right as I go dragon form, the enemies don't know what to do, and they usually don't even try to fight. But we do have dragon available for this one. Uh, the great man's the only one that we need to kind of wait until he shows up. So you can see I kind of back off. I'm like, I'm not really sure. I'm like, maybe we just give the objective and we clear boss. So I call to have everyone get away from the, uh, the objective because we're not going to be able to get it. Um, and again, I should have just stayed up there with boss. I just didn't want my team to die. Dahaka is getting bottom right now. So we have time to just clear up this. I actually really like Alex Straza for clearing bosses. You can do it rather safe by just staying at max range and hitting it with an E. But you can see even then I still need to play a little safe because I don't want to get comboed by that, that, uh, Alarak. But you can see I still keep my mana pretty reasonable. I try to stay back. I don't waste a lot of mana. Mana hasn't been a problem. If you find yourself having mana problems on Alex Straza, you really need to look at how you're using your E. I do my ult here because I'm not sure if my team was going to dive in or not. Probably not a great ult looking at it in hindsight, but I was worried that they were just going to full combo onto my team and ETC was going to slide in and try to mosh. Level 16, you get the upgrade to the dragon. It's just really valuable no matter what build you go into. Abundance giving shields is not that great because a lot of times, uh, a lot of your abundances are going to heal people at max health and then it doesn't give any value. And the shield only works for those that are in the abundance. Well, the dragon not only buffs your abundance because it allows you to fire two abundances, but it also just gives you free gift of life. So I usually don't recommend... Uh, I don't recommend picking overprotective. Same with tough love. Uh, you don't know how long you're going to be above 75% health, and you can get more free cues with just staying in dragon longer. We get one free objective here, and then we uh, we can start approaching into the the later fights. We've got one more throw that we need to add. You know, each team gets a gets a few throws. 
You can see I don't like putting W's on when we're being chased because I don't want to bait my team into going back, right? So all of my W's have been in fights that we're committing to or they're in really safe places far away. Uh, I never like to put W's in places that I'm not sure about. I do like throwing W's on camps like this because then we get a double globe at the end. Uh, it usually pays for its own mana cost back. And so I'll sometimes do that, but I didn't, don't end up doing it here. This is a weird fight. I don't like using dragon in fights like this. We don't have a major reward if we win this fight. And the enemies can just walk away. So I don't really want that. The other cool part is if you ever want to play W build, if you do have someone who can endlessly stack off of globes, it is a pretty cool thing. Like, uh, even Diablo doesn't endlessly stack off globes, but he gets a lot of healing from globes. Or you have Kael'thas who infinitely stacks off globes, or you have Stitches who infinitely stacks off globes. I don't think it's an amazing strategy because their synergies usually aren't that great. I would rather pick Alex Straza for the actual matchup rather than the rather than anything else. Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing here. If I remember right, I was thinking if I could apply enough pressure in a lane, um, we would get the the tribute for free. Oh, I thought they were at boss. That's why. I, I, just, I thought they were a boss, so I was going to see if I could just kill a uh, a couple turrets or something up top. But we're just going to steal this camp. We did lose our Dahaka there. It's a struggle. Again, I'll sometimes place a W down here so we get double globes. And I miss the globe. And we go for a keep. So they get our, our bottom fort. We get a keep out of it. Not bad. Uh, again, try to use your ult first in situations like this, then your dragon, only because if you're not fully committing to something, you don't want to waste your larger cooldown. If you are ever running away in situations like this, you can place an abundance right here, so that as he gets up to this point, not only does he get a big heal, but he gets 30% movement speed, which is mount speed. But again, I don't like baiting my team into a specific zone. This is a great spot for us if we don't get completely bursted here. Uh, we do have Z available for Dahaka. I have my Dragon and I have Cleansing Flame. I just can't be silenced and I can't be stunned. And as long as that happens, this should be a really good fight for us. So I'm trying to stay stand back a little bit, but we're getting really spread out. So I just want to make sure I'm not in a terrible spot. So we're in a really tough situation. I do use Dragon first. And we start dropping down some W's. He's diving in over there. I do get silenced. I will pop my ult here and try to heal up them. Uh, but I'm not going to be able to heal this. Oh, wait. I do heal the gray main as well. And I try go going back to my team. I try to get a nice heal off first. It doesn't go off. I do get a heal onto that. I get an abundance down. I heal the gray main one more time. I auto attack one more time. But we both go down literally point two five seconds from getting a 30 percent heal on all of us uh it would have been probably game right there if we would have actually gotten that and uh that heal it would have been game but we just spread out way too much in that fight for an alex straza healer i had to waste my ult healing the gray main i had to waste my dragon healing these guys and then when i came back everyone was already dead so if you're ever playing with an alex straza in w build stick together for the easiest way to win. If you're in an Al with an Alex Straza going Q build, feel free to spread out because she'll have the movement speed to pick up whatever else she wants. Let's fast forward through my death. And we're approaching level 20s. For level 20s in W build, I go on Ruby Wings. It's just a really powerful tool for having two different dragons available. So if you are going on Ruby Wings, yes, you can still do the old combo of W, Dragon, W, R, W. Um, but then if you do R, it'll actually extend the duration of your dragon by 15 seconds. So that is something that you can do. I usually don't do that. I simply just toss down a W and an R, and I try to get the free dragon first. So that way I can save my dragon cooldown for later. Um, or I'll try to just do a W, dragon, W, depending on the situation, and then I'll save my R for the second dragon. Uh, it just depends. Like, if I need to heal a bunch of people at the start of a fight or if I just need to do something like this where um, I might just need to pop my R. This would be a great time to... Okay, I tossed one heal at him. 
I was like, this would have been a great time to pacify him, but he was so far away. I simply just went up and threw one more heal out to keep him up. So we got a pretty good trade there. We got one extra heal. They didn't. and uh, Or one extra. We got one kill. They didn't. They got a, a boss here. But we do have the next curse. And we will have everything available for that next curse fight as well. Let's fast forward through this. We'll head down. I'm clearing up some stuff just so we don't need to worry about extra katas hitting our hitting our things. We do have a global now. And we should be good. We're setting up for the next one, but we're setting up for a, the long con, honestly. Like, we're. It hasn't even said that it's spawning yet, and we're sitting here. So, we still have at least 30 seconds. Okay, there it is. I might pop ult here to save. Like, if you're ever worried about healing someone that's really far away and in the middle of the enemy team, ult's really the only way you save someone like that. Um, but we do have the Dahaka charging in. We have an amazing tongue from that Dahaka. And then I pop my ult. I'm going to heal everyone back up to full. And right off of my ult, I will have a dragon available. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll position myself to land to where I can push the enemies in. Uh, in this case, I'm playing a more safe approach. When I'm doing that, I drop a W on the ground. Heal everyone to full health. 1,200 healing on some of us. Uh, getting some extra value off with my auto attacks. And I'll still have dragon available. I'm going to self-interrupt when my dragon ends, which is kind of dumb, but whatever. I knew it was going to happen, too. I can maybe get one heal off, so I tried to go for the heal before. We've seen how I've saved a few people. And if you don't save people from this ult, it's there's a good chance it's going to kill another person. So stopping my channel to save the gray main was pretty important. Then we just take this game and we finish it off. We still have a dragon available. And dragon's great for sieging because the enemies can't really approach. They're going to take a lot of AoE damage. My team's going to take a lot of AoE healing. And there's just not much that they can do. So I'm probably going to start off this fight by tossing down a W, going dragon form, and tossing out another W. So I did WQ, dragon form, WQ. And look at ETC's health. He goes from 10% health while taking the core shots to boom. Full health. Oh, he slid out of the uh, the abundance. Whatever. Uh, I'll auto attack and keep healing him anyways. But overall, that is Alex Straza. Uh, as far as going W build when trying to carry in these ranks, Q build is still very good if your team is heavy backline. Uh, but I do like W build for heavy frontline. It's a really, really powerful build that gets a lot of value, and you get a lot of healing. Uh, 30,000 more healing than the enemy Brightwing, as well as I was still pacifying people during fights, winning, applying enough threat during these uh, these engages. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. Feel free to throw any extra tips down there in the comments, and also feel free to check out any of my other videos. See you next time.